So today's model has been sitting around in my collection for a while, waiting to be painted. And today finally I'm going to start painting my Dark Angel Librarian. I've started with Cantor Blue first because Bean's Dark Angels tend to be quite a dark colour anyway. I wanted to try and follow that through with the Librarian, hence using a darker blue than what I would normally use for a Librarian. And this was painted over a black undercoat. Again, I'm trying to encourage keeping the main colours dark. Next, ultramarine blue was used for the edging of the armour, just to pick out those details and armoured areas finished off. Next, due to the hood, it was best to paint the face first. I started off with Kesler flesh and while the Kesler flesh was still wet, I then wet blended in pallid witch flesh into the area where the eye is. And not just the eye, but on the edge of the nose and the cheek as well, to try and make that area nice and light. Once this was dry, I then applied weak on flesh to the face area, but I left the area where we applied the padded witch flesh alone. And we'll get to that later on. And now for the cloak, first off we applied up shabti bone on the whole of the cloak. Next I started picking out some areas for the edges with Screaming Skull. And you'll also see how I picked out a part of the top of the cloak for the hood as well. In these areas, Pallid Witch Flesh was added to apply an even further highlight bring out the cloak even brighter than before and very sparingly a few areas had a little bit of white scar just to finish off the area. Now we're using Caliban Green which we used on the little details on the cloak areas and also there's a piece on the chest so we're using the Caliban Green because it helps to tie it in with the rest of the miniatures being it's the Dark Angel colour. Now this is the last colour for the cloak area and I've used two parts of Lamia medium to one part Agrax Earth Shade initially doing a very thin glaze on the top at the back of the cloak to help turn it down just slightly and once this was uh, dried I then applied a second coat of the same mixture and lastly I use a pure coat of Agrax Earth Shade to paint down the seams in between the different flaps of the cloth and also a small amount was applied to the very back of the hood and this finishes off the cloak area. All the metal areas were painted with various silver colours followed by using null oil and you're, normally I would use gold paint especially for areas like the symbol on the, on the shoulder pad and also the symbols on the legs. However, because I know how much reds and oranges are going to be involved later on in the miniature, I've chose to keep them silver instead of using gold colours. This, in the end, will make it look better. To help encourage keeping the armour looking dark, I also use the null oil in the cracks and recesses of the armour as well. A light red paint is being applied to the book, the rope and also the symbol which is on the cloth. For the pages of the book and also the skulls which won't get painted until slightly later in the video, I started off with Upshapti Bone and once the initial paint was dry I followed up with using some weakland flesh as a wash over the areas to cover these two parts. Agrax Earth Shade was watered down with some Lamia medium and then applied to one side of the book and then the book was laid down while it has time to dry so as the fluids evaporate it will give a gradient of darkness onto the side of the book to add a little bit of extra detail. First the keys were painted with Auric armour and then followed with a wash of Agrax Earth Shade over the keys and also the rope area, this time without using Lamia Medium. A very small amount of visor rust 
has been applied to the top of the book and also around the corners as well just to pick out a little bit of detail for the green areas of the miniature which is the dark angel symbol on the shoulder pad there's a small pouch and the piece of cloth on the chest we obviously started off with the caliban green again next for the first highlight we used warp stone glow now the piece of cloth on the chest i use a very small amount of moot green at the very top which is near the face just to help to illuminate that area slightly and lastly i used corellia green shade and this was only used on the grenade which is on the back of the miniature it wasn't used on the rest of the green areas and i did this to try and darken the area down initially i've used corax white to paint the inside of the hand and i've also used this to paint the purity seals throughout the miniature and once this has had time to dry mechanica standard gray has been used as a wash to go over the purity seals and then the same red as what was used before was used for the wax part of the seals now we're getting to the part of the miniature i want to paint the most so we're going to do some work on the hand and we've started off with uriel yellow once the first coat had time to dry i then applied the second coat and then i used the same red as what was used before to wet blend the red into the yellow to try and give it this heat look because i wanted to make it look like the there's energy from the librarian's abilities coming out of the palm of his hand and also a wash of the red was applied onto the opposite side of the hand in between the fingers to try and emulate the presence of the glow radiating through the fingers plaskets yellow was used to further enhance the illusion of the heat some was watered down again to be applied onto the back of the hand again between the fingers for that illusion once more of the heat coming from the hand for the eye i wanted the eye to also represent the energy of the librarian so it had a wash of furegan orange and the bionic eye was done as a red originally i was thinking of blues or greens but having two separate eyes two different colors would look too peculiar so i decided to do the bionic eye with red for the sword because the undercoat was black i've started off with two coats of shafty bone first followed by a coat of a dark orange the reason why i've done it this way is if you apply the dark orange straight onto the black you'd probably end up with needing five or six coats of the orange to build it up so this way there's slightly less coats of paint once the orange is completely dry next pick a yellow of your choice and apply two parts of an army of medium to one part yellow i use the flask it's yellow myself and apply it to the area but make sure as you, although you're applying it to a flat surface don't apply it so it ends up on the sides of the sword and as the uh, fluids will evaporate the paint will end up sticking to the details and therefore it's a very easy way to paint the sword um, the main advice i would give here is paint one side of the sword at a time and then once you have applied the fluids you want to leave the sword flat if you leave the miniature sitting upright the fluids will naturally want to cascade down the sword and therefore you'll end up with the lightness at the bottom of the sword but you won't end up with it at the top if you like the video remember to like share and click on the button on the lower right hand side to subscribe